Don't you guys just love when your disassembly process is going fairly smoothly until you get to the last bolt? Well, we're down to the last three bolts for this cowl and we just can't get them out. Welcome to Envision Prototypes. I'm Nick. We started off by cleaning out this trough here and using a screwdriver, kind of tapping it in and undoing, trying to undo them. And we got successful with the first three on that side. But these last three on this side, where most of the stuff was packed in, the leaves and whatever over the years, uh, just deteriorated the head to the point that we just can't get them out. So we turn to this uh, impact screwdriver, basically preload it, line it up and smack it with a hammer. But there's a bit of bounce in the sheet metal. And if you have a bounce, you won't be able to get them out. And now what do you do? Well, you can take and drill the heads off, but then you're stuck with the threads down inside. Once we get this cowl out, then we can go ahead and clean up all the rust on it. But until we get it out, well, you can't do much with it, especially when it's in the car and all the chrome and everything's in the way. So I'm gonna give you guys a tip that you can use next time you have a bolt or a screw stuck. And that tip comes down to using a quarter inch bolt in this case, because well, we have small screws with the tip ground down into a point. So I can set that point down into the socket head of the screw and weld it in. Just put a good tack on there. With the heat that we create with that and having a socket, we can take and work that out and spin that screw right out of there. And if that works, then we'll go on to the next ones. If it doesn't work, well, we're stuck drilling them. Now, most of you who have a garage or a small hobby shop more than likely have a MIG. And that's what we're gonna use to weld this bolt onto there. Just make sure you have the heat turned up nice and high, but not so high that you blow that bolt away because then you're really stuck. Now you basically have one shot at getting this right. So you can try holding this bolt on here with your fingers, but if it gets too hot and flops over, then, well, you've kind of lost your chance of getting it welded on properly. So we're gonna get a pair of vice grips on there. And make sure that we have the angle set just right so we're comfortable. And give that a good tack. She's stuck. Just work it back and forth. Do you want to break the weld off? There we go. Well, unfortunately it's rusted in so well that we broke off that screw. So we're gonna end up drilling it out later. But we gave it a try. So what I'm gonna do is get another bolt, prepare it, and try the next one. Sharpen up another bolt, taking the tip off, and we're gonna take and get comfortable and try welding that to that screw. Hopefully I have better luck this time. We're gonna let the weld cool a little bit. You don't wanna try turning a hot weld because it'll just spin right off. And, oh, look at that. A little bit of back and forth. And we can get that one out, fantastic. She's warm. So we'll get these locking pliers on there and just spin that out. And there we go. One screw out. I couldn't do it with a screwdriver, couldn't do the impact. Uh, one you strike with a hammer, that didn't work. The head was too chewed up. Well, this worked. So what we're gonna do is gonna take this screw and weld it the next one, just like that. When you're welding, you gotta watch for leaves such as this, and you don't get any sparks catching them on fire. Okay, let that cool off. We'll try the same thing. Work it back and forth, and see if we can spin it out. Look at that. Okay guys, well we're down to drilling out only one let me just get this out all the way. I don't want it to break off. There we go. So we got two screws out, no problems. Now we're only down to drilling only one out, the one that broke on us, which isn't too bad. If we had to drill them all out, well, I'd be complaining a little bit more. But anyway, so there's a little trick you can do to get stubborn fasteners out. And you can do this with bolts. Just take the bolts and keep stacking them. And if the bolt snaps off, well, that's fine. You don't have to take and grind it off. You just take the uh, original bolt, stick it back down and weld it and work on the next bolt. So now to get this cowl out.
Okay, I'm going to wiggle this out really slow because I don't want to bend any of the trim there around the windshield. So just keep working it. And you can see that if we had left this in place, all this rust would have stayed behind. You know, you don't want to do that. So the key is to get the parts out so you can take and restore all this back to original metal, fresh metal, prime it, and then paint it and reassemble it later on. And that way you won't have rust creeping out later on. So I'm going to go on the other side, wiggle that side out over there. And then we'll uh, get to work and clean this piece up after taking this chrome out. We'll get fresh fasteners for the front here. Now they have little slotted holes, but you know, it's just for alignment. But you can see that now we can take and disassemble this the rest of the way. But this trim piece is held on by some fasteners on the back side. So hopefully they come out. We'll soak them first, maybe give them a little bit of heat. The sockets look pretty good on them. They're not too rusty. So we're gonna go ahead and just disassemble this all the way. Then we'll take and clean all this up, get rid of all the rust and give that a nice coat of primer. And then when we go to paint it later, it'll get a fresh coat of paint. At some point you may have noticed that this trim piece has been held on with some tape. And that's because there's a fastener up underneath here we couldn't quite get to. So instead of trying to twist it out and breaking it, we waited, taped it until we can get the remaining trim out and then we could deal with this one. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these remaining fasteners out along the front of the windshield so that we can get in there and clean all this stuff up, all this, this rusty metal. Because, uh, well, paint won't stick to peeling paint. Now, these fasteners aren't too bad. They've been preserved and kept mostly dry. The reason those fasteners along the top went is because it had moisture and leaves and whatever, and well, it just deteriorated the heads. We bag, tag all the screws, label everything, because when the car goes back months later, back together months later, you know, no matter how good your memory is, you'll never remember where, the, where all the fasteners go. There's just too many. And being a Cadillac, it has triple the amount of fasteners any other GM product has. Okay. Now we've got a problem with this fastener over here. It's uh, kind of sticking. So I can't get the screwdriver in properly. So we'll leave that until the end. And then that'll become the last fastener again. So anyway, um, as soon as I get this out, we'll get working on that cowl piece and clean that up. Disassemble it, clean it up. Now in the case of this fastener, I'm gonna take the screwdriver, line it up, and just a seat the, the head into the, or the driver into the socket there. Kind of give it a bit of a love tap. Nothing too crazy, look at that. Now this was all tried earlier with those three across the top and it got to the point we just couldn't do anything with them. Okay, look at that. So I'm just taking, bag all that. And there we go. Now we can take and clean all this up in through here. Like, look at that, there's you know, so much grime and dirt in there. So if you're painting the car, this would always be coming out at you and it wouldn't give you a clean paint job either. We're not taking the glass out, that's gonna be staying put, but we're gonna take and restore all this metal here, clean it all up, get in there, clean that up, and just make sure that we can have a good base that we can apply primer to. These fasteners here, we're gonna take and try to wiggle them out, get them out. Most times they come out without too much trouble, but because it's die cast aluminum, uh, you might get trouble from time to time. That one is a little bit squeaky. So hopefully you don't have to weld anything to these. It's not coming out too bad. Maybe I jinxed myself. Nope. You'll want to just twist them off because yeah, you can apply a lot of power and if you twist it off, you're done.
Perfect. Okay. Got them all out. Nothing broke. Fantastic. Now we can go ahead and start cleaning up all this. This is a very delicate piece because you can see I'm already, I'm, when I squeeze it, it's already flexing. So you don't want to apply too much pressure and twist it out of shape. So we're gonna get the wire brush on this and just clean up all this loose paint, get rid of this. You don't want to start grinding into this with a coarse disc or anything like that because, well, it's kind of thin and you'll just destroy it. These here, we're gonna get them blasted and uh, shoot them black later on because this car is going uh, triple black, black on black on black. So I put these aside in a safe spot. We're gonna support the piece. Like that because if I try and push down with the grinder, it's going to get bent and we don't want to bend it. So I'm going to keep and move this along and this is going to support the, uh, the part. Using a relatively coarse wire wheel because I want to just get rid of all that loose rust. I don't want to polish it. Okay, so I just got this cleaned up and it's looking good. So we just removed all the loose paint, all the peeling paint and all the surface rust with the power grinder with the wire wheel there. And uh, you can see we've got bare metal showing up on top as well as on the bottom. So this is a really clean piece now. Next up for this is to get sanding on it. But we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna basically stockpile a bunch of stuff for sanding. And once you get sanding, you just keep sanding. I just want to show you guys how you go about removing a stuck fastener, and how you can make easy work of that. It saves you drilling them out. We have to drill out one here, not a problem. We'll get that done, but it's better than doing three. And the other thing is how to kind of clean up a delicate part such as this. Now, if you don't have a wire wheel for your grinder or drill, well, just pull out the manual wire brush and do it by hand. It'll get the job done as well. Take a little bit longer, but it'll get it done. I appreciate you guys watching. See you next time.